Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Philip Gallegos with Thrive Medicine. I'm sitting here with Tom Casey, who is the CEO of Spectrum Plasma. And we are going to talk everything young plasma today. As you can see, he's receiving a treatment of uh, young plasma. And we're gonna talk about what is plasma, what is young plasma, what um, are the regulations in regards to this therapy, what are some the upsides, what we can expect as some potential benefits of the therapy and what can we expect as some uh, potential risks. Any time you're doing any type of therapy, there are associated risks. We're gonna dispel any myths about young plasma or just talk about the blood donation industry in general. So, um, pleasure to have you here at the clinic and you, we're Dr. honored to be taking care of you and being able to deliver uh, a, another infusion that you've had at um, other f facilities, but this is the first time over here and we Thank, thank you for choosing us. You have a beautiful facility, so it, uh, it complements your expertise. So you, in, in talking, you said you're probably the person that's received the most young plasma of anybody that you know. Um, to your knowledge, what is this? Uh, how many times have you received it? Probably on eight different occasions, different volumes, um, at different points in time. I found that uh, plasma is volume related. We have approximately three liters of it in us. Over the next two days, I'll be receiving three. And uh, on top of the volume I have, but you removed a little over 500 mLs of blood to uh, make circulatory space. So it becomes a very comfortable process. Very easy, as complex as what I'm receiving, the administration of it is about as simple as uh, hanging an IV. So it's a, it's a very, very uh, straightforward process. So as everyone can see, you know, you're sitting here pretty relaxed, relatively yeah. pain-free. All, all you had was a, a stick of an IV um, at, the, at the beginning there. And then, um, so you, you had made mention that we took out about 500 cc's of blood. Um, what is the concern or why did we do that? We, as you add volume, you can get into a situation with uh, circulatory overload. It's relatively acceptable for most people to receive one liter. We have five liters of blood and plasma in our system, and 55% uh, of that is the plasma. So when you start adding, most people on average have a tolerance for one liter. And if you're going to receive more, because actually the stick wasn't painful, the most painful part is, you know, all the travel and everything to get here because the, the procedure itself is uh, very straightforward and very simple. So because I am a traveler and I, I've come out from San Diego, I kind of want to receive as much volume as I can. Uh, the objective is over the next two days to get three liters. So I'd like to get the three liters as quickly as I can and then, you know, depart. And that uh, removal of the blood makes the space. Otherwise, if you tolerate a liter a day, then I'd be here for three. So the removal gets rid of some of the old, gets rid of the iron that accumulates uh, within all of us. But most uh, importantly, it makes the space to be able to then receive the two liters in one session. So um, for those people that don't know much about Young Plasma, Young Plasma is only currently available in the state of Texas. Is that correct? That's correct. And why is that so? Spectrum Plasma is a member of the American Association of Blood Banks, which was formed in 1947, that group. And their primary mission was then and is today to provide plasma and blood products to hospitals for surgical procedures. We're using plasma here for therapeutic purposes. And when you're doing that, then you need to be more specific as to the health of the donor, the sex of the donor, and the age group within that donor, uh, that that donor falls within. So for the layperson, the, the plasma that you're receiving is undergoing the same strict and rigorous process that the plasma that I would be receiving if I went to the hospital and had some type of procedure and would require blood products. Exactly, so. exactly. Although spectrum plasma performs more tests than are required of blood banks, and because we're not in an emergency room, this is uh, an elective procedure. 
So we perform some tests on female donors for the HLA antibody. Every donor that comes in uh, receives protein tests. Now, some protein tests are common. We also do more advanced protein testing because we're looking for not only a healthy donor, each are health examined before they make a donation, but we're also looking for the highest level of proteins, normal level of proteins, uh, that indicates a, uh, a very healthy composition of the plasma itself. So for those people wondering, when they hear young plasma, they may think that we're out there procuring plasma from babies or kids. Yeah. What is the definition or the age grouping for young plasma? Well, I'm 72, so everyone's young to me. So mm -hmm. what we look at is uh, we're biologically programmed to age. And our biologic purpose, as with all living things, is to reproduce. And so we reach, on average, our reproductive peak between the age of 18 to 25. Aging actually commences at the age of 26, slowly, and then it reaches its first milestone, so to speak, at 34, then a little bit of a uh, long ramp until you're 60, and then your final, let's say, dip is at 78. So at 72, the, having the opportunity to receive plasma from an adult um, all our donors are 18 to 25, 18 being the legal age of adulthood, but that also means they're at their peak of biologic reproductive prowess, you know, whether that's mental, physical, from a fertility point of view. So our biology is optimized during that period of time, which we sometimes call the Olympic years. And so by simply accepting donations uh, from health tested individuals and the plasma itself undergoes rigorous testing then to administer it as easily with an IV is surprisingly simple uh, visually but the plasma itself is extraordinarily complex and is so specific to points in our life that uh, even three years age inter intervals are identifiable. So we go the 18 to 25 because that's when we're at our peak of our biologic life and that's the plasma we exclusively collect. So is this plasma people are going to want to know, is it FDA approved and is this legal to administer? Plasma was approved in 1938. We actually started the use of it uh, worldwide during World War I it was introduced to the United States in the 1920s. It became an approved biologic in 1938. So plasma since 1938 has been legally available for doctors to use as they medically deem advisable. Blood banks themselves, we go through yearly audits. Um, we are very rigor rigorous in our procedures and the testing that we perform uh, much of it is uh, federal regulations that are provided, but we also, at Spectrum Plasma, we go a little bit farther in testing the donors um, just to be sure that they are at their optimal health and therefore ideal to be used, to have that plasma be used therapeutically. So currently we can only receive young plasma therapy in Texas, so if anybody wants it in the United States or outside the United States internationally, you have to travel to Texas. Um, so, uh, and is Spectrum Plasma the only um, outlet for young plasma at this time, or are there other um, blood banks that are engaged in? To my knowledge, we're, and over the last four years, excuse me, eight years, we've been the only blood bank in the world that uh, collects plasma from 18 to 25 year old individuals Blood banks in general are contracted to hospitals, so they supply those surgical needs. The uh, history of blood banks is that communities got together, they opened up blood banks to the federal regulations uh, and the criteria, but basically to serve their own community's needs within a hospital environment. The issue of collecting plasma is a little bit more complex. 
is although plasma is blood, part of our blood, um, most of the world, in fact, every country except the United States and, and one uh, small uh, country, categorize plasma as a blood product. Unlike blood, which contains cells, when you donate, it is a debilitating process in, in a minor, minor sense, but you can only donate blood once every six, every two months, so only six times a year. Plasma reconstitutes itself in 48 hours. So it is legal within the United States to donate plasma 104 times a year. Now, we don't at Spectrum collect that frequently. Uh, we cut that number in half because we want the donor themselves to be very at their peak of proteins and, and you know, kind of biologically, the composition of the plasma depends upon that. So we're the only blood bank that I'm aware of and have been aware of for the last eight years that specifically deals with uh, physicians that are in the therapeutic arena outside of hospitals. So plasma itself, 70% of the plasma in the world comes from the United States because of that distinguishing plasma separate from blood and blood with blood cells. We kind of call it the, the red versus the gold. And um, because we're here in Texas, uh, our plasma product is only available in Texas, but even in other places of the world, like an older society like Japan, um, they can't collect plasma frequently enough to really have it become available for therapeutic purposes. So Texas right now is the center of the universe. So you were um, highlighting that there's rigorous testing on blood products, but I would say the biggest fear of most people receiving blood is potentially contracting a communicable disease. What, um, like even now with COVID, they were restricting people, giving blood, things of that sort. So do we have to worry and what is the risk when we receive spectrum plasma as a therapeutic agent? Is there a high risk of any infectious agent, potentially? Well, the, the history of uh, plasma has been related to pathogens uh, for most of the 100 years. Uh, hepatitis was uh, originally a predominant pathogen. Then during the 80s, 90s, even AI AIDS was a, uh, a very formidable pathogen. But what happened was science prevailed because in April of 2000, Testing got so uh, specific, so advanced, that pathogens are now detected in the blood products themselves. So we undergo rigorous testing. Every donation, a sample is taken and sent out to laboratories for testing. Once it comes back showing negative for pathogens, then that is safe to use directly. So the arm to arm, really, from a donor into someone like myself, has only been possible since the year 2000. But for the last 23 years, it has been exceptionally safe because we use as much as 10,000 units of plasma every single day. It is the most safety tested biologic on earth. And so we go through more than 2 million multiple transfusions, multiple units of plasma transfusions a year. But in the case of a pathogen, not all pathogens are carried in the blood, and again, we test for them, but we were told by the FDA in February of 2020 that COVID is not conveyed in blood products, and so the dip in supply really was um, that donors were staying home at that time. It's not that the plasma itself conveyed that pathogen. So our testing is very, very rigorous, and for the last 23 years, our blood supply has been, and the plasma as part of that blood supply, has been extraordinarily safe. There is no reason that plasma can't be provided around the world. So it's a matter of choice. Some of it is regulatory as far as the collection frequency. And in the United States, we're allowed to collect plasma because it's classified distinct from red blood cells uh, more frequently, but it was really our choice. Uh, we're a member of the American Association of Blood Banks that was formed back in 19, 
1947, primarily to supply hospitals. So we came here to Texas uh, to specifically open up a legal and fully accredited blood bank with the purpose of supplying physicians like Dr. Gallegos. If I am a physician outside of Texas, I have clients, I want to start administering plasma in my clinic in New York, North Carolina, wherever it may be throughout the United States. Is that possible or do I have, to, is there some type of system where I refer clients to trusted practitioners in Texas? Um, and why can't I just you know, have it shipped? Why can't you just ship it to Dr. Smith in New York? Well, we are first under the regulations of the state of Texas and then crossing state lines, interstate, is uh, a federal regulation. So it's more a matter of choice. Blood banks choose to supply hospitals and that we have chosen to supply private practice physicians. It's only available in Texas because we've not been granted permission by the federal government to ship it out of state. So at this point in time, we're the only blood bank exclusively collecting sex-identified plasma from 18 to 25-year-old donors, health-qualified donors, and the plasma has been rig rigorously tested. But we are not at this time allowed to ship it outside of Texas. So then if I am Dr. Smith in New York, and I'm interested, I've been to a conference, a biohacking conference, somewhere where they've presented the, um, you know, Dr. Ginsburg, who is involved in the current IRB for young plasma, goes around speaking about the, the study and, and the results that have occurred thus far. I get excited. I want to potentially come get it, um, therapy myself, or I want to send clients. How is, is that possible? You would have to send those clients to a trusted physician such as yourself within Texas, but the beauty of it all is that it's a very simple procedure, and in the span of two days, that individual can be treated and then go back home because the duration of plasma, first identified by Stanford and then identified by Dr. Ginsburg in her studies, is two to four years, um, depending upon the condition. So people can travel here, receive the treatment very quickly, and then go home. And even institutional review boards are not required for the administration of plasma because it's up to the doctor's discretion because it is a fully approved biologic. Dr. Ginsburg is using an institutional review board to then set the structure of being able to provide outcomes from the treatment. And we've treated more than 650 individuals um, to the public so they can decide, along with their physicians, what the therapeutic benefits of that treatment have been. Yeah, and as the, the viewer can see, it's, it's a, a very easy, like you said, essentially painless, relaxed. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have you in an interview chair when you come see us. You'll be in a, a beautiful uh, lounge that we have to, to be able to administer the plasma. And we do the plasma according to each individual patient. So uh, each patient doesn't get one liter, two liter, three liters. They don't all get it in one day or two days. Exactly. It's spread apart depending on the patient's comorbidities or size or issues that, that they're having. Um, so we're very mindful of that um, cadence of how they're receiving the plasma so we can do it in a very safe um, manner and in a safe facility. Um, so one of the concerns might be well, is it safe to deliver plasma outside of the hospital since the majority of plasma is delivered in hospital? Well, actually it's uh, delivered in hospital from external blood banks. So the shipping process for a blood bank to a hospital or for spectrum plasma, an accredited blood bank to you, is exactly the same. And we use the same validated shipping containers, which are temperature controlled. Uh, because it's very important to preserve the bioactivity of the plasma itself. And so we go through all the testing, all the procedures as if we were supplying a hospital. We just put your name on the box that is used to supply those hospitals when we supply you. And I can confirm that. So hmm. my other job is a, is a, and specialty in boarding is as an anesthesiologist. So having received blood, and administering blood in the hospital 
it's the same exact packaging, paperwork, procedure, the label is the same. This, we go through the same rigorous process of confirming blood types, um, confirming that it's the correct patient, correct numbers, uh, everything uh, matches from that particular product to you so that we're delivering it in a safe manner and it's shipped in the same way, we store it in the same way, we handle it in the same way. Exactly. So everything that I've seen go on in my hospital practice is the same thing that we've instituted here in a clinical practice. Uh, and to include um, avoiding any complications or reacting to, on the rare occasion, if there was something that were to happen, we have the ability and we have um, all the means to take care of any type of reaction that a, a patient could potentially have. And, and plasma is very documented. So uh, again, more than 2 million multiple transfusion units of plasma are performed a year. And so it's a very, very common practice. But IVs themselves are, are very common, all the way from the hospital environment to a company I started that a uh, long time ago that does 20,000 infusions in homes a month to even hydration spas that are starting to proliferate. So the IV process is very, very simple. It's very straightforward. It's safe to do within multiple environments, including, uh, you know, even within your hotel room if you're in Las Vegas with a hangover. So it's, it's the IV aspect of this is very, very simple. The volume uh, considerations uh, for circulation are the same regardless of whether it's plasma or whether it's a saline or a ringer solution. So that part remains the same. Plasma itself though, when you're using it therapeutically different than a hospital, we sex identify the plasma. So you're not in a surgical procedure looking for volume replacement and platelets for clotting. You're coming in for therapeutic purposes and men and women are very, very different. So we sex identify the plasma, so females receive plasma from a 18 to 25 year old female at her biologic peak, and men receive it from the same age group of donors, but it's identified as men, so men can receive plasma from men, because plasma itself contains proteins and peptides, contains exosomes, but it also contains hormones. So we believe it is very important to be able to provide it uh, specific to the sex of the recipient, and that is different. That's an advancement from uh, treatments that go on in hospitals. What, has there been any fatalities, one with young plasma? Has there been any major reactions that we need to be aware of? And is the person that's considering this therapy, can they have some sense of assurance that it's a, a relatively safe procedure? It has been documented on an annual basis by the Food and Drug Administration, and uh, the fatalities are either non-existent or very low for plasma. The most common adverse effect, which is extremely rare, let's say in the case of 2.1 million transfusions, they may have one, two, or three males that receive plasma from a female that has an antibody that can build up during uh, childbirth. And so that's why it's very important for us to protect against that. So males only receive plasma from males and females from females, but we test every donor, which is not a required test for that HLA antibody because even females should not receive that if they're getting a therapeutic treatment. So we're, we're very safe. The, Re repercussions of a male receiving female plasma who is HLA positive could be lung failure, transfusion associated uh, lung injury, and they call it trolley. So out of two million, there may be one trolley fatality, which we completely avoid because of the HLA testing and because of the sex identification. But when you really look at it from a statistical point of view, uh, even under those circumstances, if it's not sex identified or HLA testing, you have a greater probability of being struck by lightning in your life than you have having an adverse event from plasma. 
And that's straight out of the uh, safety studies. So to reiterate, when I go into the hospital and if I have some unfortunate accident that requires me to have some type of blood products, plasma specifically, um, they're not testing for male and female. So I may get a pool of plasma, correct? They pool the, the units. So even with that, the risk is very low of a trolley, a transfusion related acute lung injury. Um, but spectrum goes one step further and we test for male, female, and male only get male, female only get female. So with that, no fatalities ever with young plasma therapeutics in clinic. So our experience has been the one, and you, you'll see this in a clinical setting or hospital setting as well, very minor um, reactions that you can have with plasma, especially if you're not typing exactly right. O to O, you, you might see some um, some itching, some hives, some swelling, but we have taken steps to pre-treat our patients. So we give them H2 and H1 blockers, so histamine blockers, Benadryl and Pepsid, so we can avoid even having any reaction. Uh, and even with that, very minimal reaction that we've ever seen is, is some itching. So. And that, that really is kind of the encapsulation of it. Not only is it a simple procedure, but really uh, take some Benadryl and, and uh, do some of that blocking and your body's initial reaction to receiving another individual's plasma then gets neutralized, really. It's a very, very minor reaction. It's a very brief reaction, but it makes the whole process uh, very comfortable. So it's very safe. It's very easy to do. So it's uh, worked out very, very well. And uh, as far as some of those uh, uh, greater risks, we do avoid those through testing and through the sex identification. So this is really, uh, we have what we call keeping it uh, safe, simple, and scientific. So some of our more biohacking leaning um, viewers may be familiar with plasma exchange <coughs> where you're taking out some plasma, putting in some albumin or doing plasmapheresis. How does young plasma compare to these other procedures that they might be seeing um, these other wellness clinics uh, performing? Well, the removal of plasma and the replacement with saline is something that uh, plasma collection centers do 150,000 times a day. There are approximately uh, 30,000 procedures formed uh, in major medical centers that are called total plasma exchanges. And when you do a total plasma exchange, because normally your largest donation will be one liter, but if you do a total exchange, you're removing three liters, and then you need to add that plasma protein albumin to maintain the osmotic balance in your circulatory system. Now, what happens is plasma contains 10,500 proteins, 5,000 peptides, 45 cytokines, 1.84 billion exosomes per ml, and 50 sex-specific hormones along with all the associated minerals, you know, calciums, potassiums, um, that our bodies require. And so what happens is when you remove your plasma and put in saline, you're not bringing in any of the active agents. You're not bringing in the proteins. <laughs> we'll run that one again. Maybe that door should be closed. It's closed, it's just loud, it ah, off gases. Ah, okay. What happens in a plasma exchange is that you're not replacing any of the proteins or the peptides or the exosomes or the hormones that you have removed. You're basically removing your plasma and replacing it with saline and adding, if you remove uh, larger volumes of your plasma, albumin uh, to, to balance uh, your osmotic levels within your circulatory system. So receiving plasma itself is the better substitute, but for the last 50 years, uh, and when, it, when the plasma exchange process started, 
the blood supply was not sophisticated enough to be tested to identify all the pathogens. So that became April of 2000 that that identification was made. So now we can remove the plasma but replace it with plasma that has all those proteins and peptides and hormones, especially uh, as it becomes sex identified. And so it brings back to the body what you removed and therefore it has metabolic benefits where if you pull out your plasma and just replace it with saline, you, it's like changing the oil on your engine. Uh, it doesn't fix your engine. It just may make it run a little less uh, uh, dirty, so to speak. And so there is a great difference between just a plasma exchange with saline and then removing plasma and replacing it with plasma from a donor at the peak of their life. So in essence, we're getting everything that God intended in our system to be put back in the system instead of reduction in just to albumin. So having volume replacement, um, like you alluded to with some protein, so you prevent uh, there any osmotic dysfunction and, and fluid spilling out of the, uh, the vasculature. So. Yeah, and, th and there's really two levels to it. One is that uh, uh, Mother Nature, uh, God has uh, optimized us during our biologic peak of uh, reproduction. And that's very, very important to be able to capture that. But there's also one more element to that, which is saline that you use in a plasma exchange is sterile. And we are binary, we are, that, and that is a binary product. We are actually quantum beings. And so life begets life. And so when we collect plasma from a donor, we don't sterilize it, we test it to make sure it's pathogen free, and then we freeze it at minus 80 degrees centigrade to preserve that life. So when it becomes warmed, just before it's administered into me, it has all the biologic properties that it had in nourishing that uh, young donor, and all of it has been preserved, and because it's very, very important to communicate to our bodies at the level of the physics that runs within our metabolism, and that is quantum. So synthetic drugs are binary, sterilized products are binary, and so you must go through that uh, extreme freezing process and the thawing to be able to capture that, which is the, really the most important element of, um, of interacting with our body because in essence we're communicating at the same level with the same language. So I know the, the listeners are probably wondering what is it that you've experienced personally? What are the benefits that you've experienced? So we can talk about you know what are uh, some expected uh, benefits of this therapy but what is it you having gone through so many treatments has you coming back for more and what is it uh, that you've benefited from each therapy? Uh, last year Harvard said that biology is 99 percent software and that software is our plasma. That contains all the signals to run what is conventionally called our programmed aging. And so what you have with uh, plasma is an element that's able to uh, change that aging because it controls our aging and they found in studies out of Stanford that being able to control the aging process by biohacking with plasma goes two ways. So I'm 72, so my plasma in a young donor, Stanford proved, would make every cell in their body think they're 72. And so a uh, little less popular than take plasma from an 18 to 25 year old and put it in someone like me, it's like turning the switch because if plasma is the software, the cells and tissues, as Harvard stated, are the hardware. So it's almost like changing signals, changing channels that you're viewing. You can go to a, from a black and white movie to a color movie simply by changing the channels. So as we change the software that we put into our body with something as simple as an IV, 
I'm introducing to my body all that youth and vitality that a 18 to 25 year old holds and every cell in my body is responding like changing a channel and it happens immediately. Soon as our, it, it's volume related, but as soon as our cells receive that young signal, that is the way they act and respond very much the same as they receive my old signal or I stay without this intervention, then my body is going to continue with that programmed aging. At 72, the next milestone is 78. So the process is so simple at a certain level that uh, the plasma really comes into our body. And so the benefits that you see are immediate. It goes to every single cell in your body because plasma carries all those proteins and all those nutrients. It also carries out the waste. So when I receive uh, plasma from a uh, 18 to 25 year old donor, I'm getting all their proteins and peptides and hormones, but I'm also getting part of their biome. And so what people, uh, we've been able to fill the prescriptions for more than 650 individuals. What we find they report back to their physicians is better sleep, better libido. And then as the days go on and the effect is immediate, but recognizing the benefits, five, five days, seven days, 14 days, you're gonna find that your strength, your energy, your balance, your thoughts uh, become more clear because in essence, you're reinvigorating all of the cells in your body. And so it's interesting that we're in a disease specific society. I have diabetes, I'm treating that. I have Parkinson's disease, I'm treating that. The plasma goes to every cell in your body. So you may be treating your diabetes but it's making your hair and your skin and your eyesight and your bones, as it's been reported to us through these studies, they benefit. So the plasma is a systemic treatment. The plasma itself isn't targeting anything other than every single cell in your body. And so the benefits that have been reported through these studies have correlated to that. So people, they muscles, their bones, all the cells in their body start responding with that same regenerative signal that we all have during that period of time of being 18 to 25. And that age group was also identified by Stanford as being that optimal period of time. What has been the most significant effects that you've seen, both initially when you get it the day after, two days, three days after, and then a month or so after? For you specifically, what is been? Me specifically, it's probably energy mm -hmm. and strength and balance. Um, it, it, it is very, for me, it has been very, very empowering. Then I found over the years that my skin is better than it was 10 years ago. And that you have, my eyesight is better than it was. And so it's, it's just very interesting that it's so simple at a level, we're just biohacking with this optimal package of plasma replacing or, or complementing the plasma that I have within me that is continuing to make me old. So this is a simple interruption in that process, but because it's systemic, because it goes to every single cell in your body, you start finding yourself improving. You're, you're giving your cells not only an exosome signal, which is to start regenerating, but you're giving it all that it needs, all the proteins and all the peptides and cytokines and hormones to be able to take that message and have your cells respond to it. Yeah, I would say in, in our practice, um, as since we've been administering it, most common would be Decrease in joint pain, yeah. so noticeable decrease in aches and pains for a lot of people. Like you said, increase in strength, better sleep, better energy and focus, um, and for some, libido is a big thing. It's very it, true, it, it and, it, and, it's, and it's noticeable, and you're also lowering the level of inflammation in your body. 
Now there's other things that you notice specific. For myself, I have a congenital heart defect. And so I had to have a heart valve replaced because I was born that way. But as a consequence of that, a certain protein, uh, BMP, builds up uh, that is an indication of heart failure. And so I went and had my BMP measured at 6,800. I received the plasma, went to 700, received some more 500, and now I'm at 300. So I went, and the standard is 899 is your highest level of normal. After that, you are in documented heart failure. So from 899, I'm at 6,800. I've been receiving these treatments. Now I'm at 300. So some of it is specific. As you see a Parkinson's patient benefit, as you see an Alzheimer's patient benefit, We've had dramatic results with people, as it's been reported to us by the physicians and researchers, dramatic results from these uh, treatments with diabetics. And so at a certain point, these age-related conditions are very simply uh, benefited by this biohack. And it's a very, very natural process. And for those people wondering, we are doing some measurable um, outcomes. So we had you do a testing yeah. barrage of um, a cognitive and executive function. Uh, you got to play some games that, <laughs> <laughs> that were uh, uh, causing you some frustration there for a bit. But we, we test your cognitive function, and we're going to do a measurable test again when you're uh, a couple months down the line to see mm -hmm. has that changed. Um, we checked your balance, we checked your grip strength, which is another measure of longevity. Um, and then um, we did include something that we haven't been doing in our practice, but this uh, Wabi device that uh, does process EEG of the brain. So we will repeat that as well to see if there's any areas of your brain that light up or that are functioning more. So it'll be interesting to see uh, objectively data that we can collect to see how it changes. And this is all part of the, minus the WAVI, is part of the IRB that Dr. Ginsburg is heading up, which she'll be very happy to know that you finally joined <laughs> after all this time. So um, we look forward to seeing that data um, and just look forward to seeing, hearing about how you're feeling down the road. And uh, objectively, you know, you're talking about your heart failure. These are numbers that have been checked by labs and we've been following labs. And so not just you, but other clients, you can see these labs improve. So um, the future with Young Plasma and this therapeutic is, is very bright. It's very um, amazing at some of the things that we've seen come out of the study, some of these results and some of the um, changes in people's lives that people have experienced. Uh, and it's just early in its understanding and kind of usage. So it'll be great to see what comes out of this. And it's, you know, probably the easiest way to say it is, even as old as I am, I can remember when I was 18 to 25. If I got a bruise or a cut, I healed very quickly. As you get older, not so quickly. You can actually see it slowing down because your body's ability to repair itself becomes impaired. And so we're less able to recover, which is why 90% of diseases occur later in life. So inflammation builds up, our ability to repair itself deteriorates, and this is part of our programmed age. But when you receive the plasma, then you find that your ability to recover is much more quick. Your inflammation is reduced, so then your body's response which often is adverse to inflammation by creating different types of diseases or there are consequences of that, starts becoming, that risk starts becoming reduced because we all really do feel pretty good at 18 to 25. You're not finding these conditions within that age group. You're finding it as people get older. So this whole process is, at one level, incredibly complex, but at another level, it absolutely makes sense because all you really have to do 
is think back that, yeah, I felt pretty good when I was 18 to 25. And these, this profile of proteins that I'm receiving and everything else that's in the plasma, my body hasn't seen in 50 years. But it remembers. Just like I remembered how, felt, uh, how well I felt back then, my body remembers when it receives this plasma and starts responding. So physics are such that you're not going to bring yourself back to where you were. But what you can do is optimize where you are now and who you are going to be going forward. And I, I think that's an extraordinary opportunity from something that is so safe and is so simple to receive. And it's, um, it's, it's just very straightforward. It is the way God and nature had intended. And all we're doing is learning that lesson. And then through very capable physicians, such as are here at Thrive, who are then scientifically documenting all of those benefits, um, we're finding that what makes sense becomes actually the science. It becomes the truth and that we benefit. So um, it's, it's an extraordinary opportunity that's available to us all. Plasma is only now available here in Texas and, and with very capable hands. And it's an opportunity I think we should, for speaking for my age group, um, take advantage of. Well, Tom, with that, we're going to let you get back to actually relaxing, enjoying your therapy, and we're honored to take care of you. We're glad that you're here. We've uh, not only you're experiencing some uh, young plasma, but you're doing some adjuvant therapy. So we had you do photobiomodulation in the red room. We're doing um, some vibroacoustic therapy, uh, get you in that parasympathetic state, for, which I know for you is a very difficult place to be. Um, so we achieve that, so I feel good about that, and then we do some... Oh, I'd also like to add that it's fun. I mean, this is sometimes, you know, it's like, well, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, a little pain before the gain. And as they say, you know, um, when you have something like this and, and go through some of these exams, which are actually enjoyable, so it, it's been a very positive process. It's been a very simple process, um, and so to be able to have all of this available to you and to be able to see really where you stand in life and then make a definitive change to your own benefit is um, an enjoyable experience. And then when you have the aesthetics and the ambiance of this environment to do it, so you have the skill set but you also have a very relaxed environment. And, and so it's been entirely an enjoyable experience where I can't say, you know, having my valve replaced or anything was in that category, but here I am benefiting everything, my brain to my bones, and I'm having fun. Excellent, we're happy you're here. Thank you for the information. My and pleasure. we'll let you uh, carry on with your uh, therapy. Thank you very much.